welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new to my channel welcome to medcode insight hi i am nishaba a certified medical coder in this video we will discuss excision a very important topic within the interventary system we will cover how to code excision when excision code involves repair or adjacent tissue transfer and which coding guidelines should be followed in this scenario we will also explore how modifiers play a role in this context with the hope of creating a better understanding of this concept let's get started excision is defined as full thickness removal of a lesion including margins and includes simple closure when performed There are two type of the skin lesions benign and malignant malignant cells are cancerous and often end with the suffix oma as seen in the basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma keep this key point in the mind when eliminating option for excision involving benign or malignant cells For coding excision, it is important to understand another key term, excise diameter. Excision codes are arranged based on location and excise diameter, so we need to consider both factors. For example, in the code 11400, the specified locations include trunk, arm, or legs, along with excise diameter. Subcodes correspond to different diameters. When calculating the excise diameter, specific guidelines must be followed if the question mentions a diameter along with additional margin that will be a clue to find the excise diameter if the question doesn't specify a margin you can directly use the lesion diameter to determine the excision code let's take an example to clarify how to measure the excise diameter and enhance understanding Let's take an example where the lesion has an excise diameter of 0.9 cm and a margin of 0.3 cm is taken. In this scenario, to determine the excise diameter for coding, you need to calculate it using the following step. In the first step, multiply the margin by 2. By multiplying, we will get the answer of 0.6 cm. Then add the margin to the lesion diameter. After adding Lesion diameter of 0.9 cm with the margin 0.6 cm or excise diameter is 1.5 cm. On CPT page number 89, we have guidelines related to the excision of benign lesions. It is important to highlight key terms that will aid you not only in practice but also during exam. By repeating reviewing these guidelines, they will become ingrained into your memory, assisting you greatly on exam day through the elimination method. Make sure to highlight different types of the benign lesion, definition of excision, calculation of excise diameter, guidelines for different types of repair and adjacent tissue transfer, how to code these in conjunction with excision. By focusing on these key elements, you will enhance your understanding and retention making it easier to apply this knowledge during the studies and examination. The guidelines for benign and malignant lesions are almost same. On page number 91, be sure to highlight the different types of malignant lesions. Also highlight the guidelines regarding when to use the modified 58 with excision codes, especially in the cases of pre-excision performed during the post-operative period. While coding for excision, there are several important guidelines to follow. Excision codes based on two types of the lesions, benign or malignant. Choose the appropriate coding based on the type. Only code for the excise diameter. If a re-excision is performed after a few days in the post-operative period, use modifier 58. Excision codes include simple closure, so do not code it separately. 
However, if the excision is repaired by the intermediate or complex closure, those should be reported separately. When coding excision along with repair, always append modifier 51 to the repair code. If an excision is performed in conjunction with the adjacent tissue transfer, report only the adjacent tissue transfer code. Let's understand each guideline through practical examples to enhance your comprehension. How is the excision of a 2.0 cm melanoma of the skin on the arm with 0.1 cm margin and repaired by single layer closure coded. Option A with the service code 11600 and 11602. Option B with the service code 11603, 12001 along with modifier 51. Option C with the service code 11403. Option D with the service code 11603. Our first step is to identify the procedure. In this case, an excision followed by a single layer closure is performed. If we review the guidelines regarding excision followed by single layer closure, we note that excision code includes simple closure and therefore it should not be coded separately. Based on this guideline, we will first eliminate the option B. For the remaining option, date mention all excision related codes, we need to determine the type of the lesion in which the excision is performed. Since the procedure was performed on melanoma, a malignant lesion indicated by the suffix OMA, we will also eliminate option C which pertain to a benign lesion. After eliminating option B and C, a next step is to find the correct malignant code based on location and excise diameter. In this scenario, the lesion diameter is provided along with the margin, which means we first need to calculate the excise diameter. To measure the excise diameter, we multiply the margin size by 2, which gives us an answer of 0.2 cm and then add this to the lesion diameter of 2.0 cm. This result and an excise diameter of 2.2. The location specified in the scenario is the arm. So for the arm with excise diameter of 2.2 cm, the correct option is option D with the service code 11603. A dermatologist excises a 4.0 cm benign lesion from a patient's back. After the lesion is successfully removed, the dermatologist performs an intermediate 4.0 cm layered closure. How should you report these services? Option A with the service code 11404, 12031. Option B with the service code 11404 and 12032 along with modifier 51. Option C with the service code 11404. Option D with the service code 11444, 12032 along with modifier 51. Our first step is to identify the procedure. In this case, an excision followed by intermediate layer closure is performed. If we review the guideline regarding excision followed by intermediate layer closure, we see that excision repaired by intermediate closure should be reported separately. When coding excision with repair, always append modifier 51 to the repair code. Based on these guidelines, we can easily eliminate option A and option C. 
After eliminating option A and C, our next step is to find the correct code based on location and excise diameter. In the given scenario, a benign lesion with an excise diameter of 4.0 cm is removed from patient back. Code 11444 is for benign lesion excised from face, ear, eyelid, nose, lips, or mucous membrane, while code 11404 applies to benign lesion excised from trunk, arm, or leg. On the basis of location and excise diameter, our correct option is option B with the service code 11404. Surgeon excised a 1.2 cm squamous cell carcinoma but returned the patient to surgery three days later for another excision measuring 1.6 cm because the margin were not clear. How would the same physician code the re-excision? Option A with the service code 11602 along with service code 11623 along with modifier 59. Option B with the service code 11603 along with modifier 58. Option C with the service code 11603. Option D with the service code 11602 along with modifier 58. Our first step is to identify the procedure. In this case, plain three days later re excision of squamous cell carcinoma was performed. Upon return to surgery, you should code the excision along with modifier 58, which indicate a staged or related procedure or service by the same physician or qualified healthcare professional during the post-operative period, because it occurred within the 10 days global period of the first procedure. So on the basis of modifier 58 for the re-excision done during the post-operative period, First, we will eliminate the option A and option C. After eliminating option A and C, our next step is to find the correct excise diameter. Code 11602 cross 1 to excise diameter ranges of 1.1 to 2.0 cm, while code 11603 applies to ranges of 2.1 to 3.0 cm. The excise diameter during the post-operative period is 1.6 cm which falls within the range of service code 11602. Therefore, for the squamous cell carcinoma re-excised during the post-operative period with an excise diameter of 1.6 cm, the correct option is option D with the service code 11602 along with modifier 58. Surgeon performed an excision of a 0.5 into 0.6 vessel cell carcinoma on the patient's nose with 0.1 cm margin extending into the subcutaneous fate, creating a 0.8 into 0.7 cm defect. The surgeon closed the defect with a bilobe flap. How should we code this? Option A with the service code. 11,641, 14,060. Option B with the service code 11,641, 13,151. Option C with the service code 14,061. Option D with the service code 14,060. Our first step is to determine the procedure performed. In this scenario, procedure was excision with closure after defect using a bilobe flap which is a type of adjacent tissue transfer for coding the excision along with adjacent tissue transfer we should follow the guideline stating that when an excision is performed in conjunction with adjacent tissue transfer only the adjacent tissue transfer should be reported based on this guideline we should eliminate option a Additionally, we will eliminate option B. 
as we cannot use the repair code with the adjacent tissue transfer code as mentioned. After eliminating option A and B, both remaining options C and D are for adjacent tissue transfer based on different defect sizes. In this scenario, the procedure was performed on the nose and the area of the defect is 0.8 into 0.7 cm which is total of 5.6 square cm. Therefore, you should report code 14060 for the adjacent tissue transfer performed on eyelid, nose, ear or lips with the defect size 10 square cm or less. So our correct option is option D. Thank you for watching. If you have any question or need further clarification, please feel free to write in the comment section. For more detailed guidelines, CPC mock exam related questions and notes, email me at the giving email id.